Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for October 21st, 2024. Well, hey everyone, I hope you had a great weekend. I apologize that Friday I was not around on a really quick trip to Minneapolis to celebrate my son's um, engagement to a wonderful young lady. So, um, was just a really fast trip <laughs> to Minnesota and back. And unfortunately this morning, um, I just um, had a thunderstorm come through. And so there will be no blog today. So I do apologize for that, but I think I'm gonna be able to get the video out on time. So let's take a quick look at what happened um, overnight here, um, Asian markets, Asian markets, well, kind of mixed. Shanghai cut their prime loan um, rates just a bit and um, kind of a mix on that. Shanghai was only up 0.20% on that news. Um, Hong Kong, however, declined 1.57%. We saw um, South Korea was a little bit higher. India was lower. Uh, the Nikkei was lower on the day and Australia was able to pull off um, a nice little increase up 0.74% on the day. If we take a look at European markets this morning, they are down across the board here this morning. Of course, there's just tremendous anticipation about all the earnings and we've had uh, quite a run to the upside here. So maybe just a little bit of concern about what those earnings might bring us and that um, just a tiny little bit of concern on um, the elevation here of the market. So right now we've got the DAX down um, 149 points, 150 points. FTSE is down 17.46 uh, points and the CAC is down 61 06 this morning. If we take a look at U.S. markets, U.S. markets, last night we had futures just a little bit higher, but this morning they're a little bit on the downside with the NASDAQ taking the biggest hit of all and probably one of the reasons seeing European markets and then of course the Hong Kong market, which is really tech heavy, being uh, lower yesterday, down 105 points or 0.51 percent. S&P 500 futures are down 0.30 percent or 1725, and the Dow futures at the moment down 95 points or 0.22 percent. Of course, we have an awful lot of data coming our way here this week. We'll be talking about that here in just a moment. But if we take a look at bonds here this morning, well, bonds continue to be a little bit on that problematic side. The bonds just aren't relieving. The bonds seem to be disagreeing right now with the overall market. Right now, the two-year bonds at 3.99%. The 10-year bonds are at 412 <laughs> And those pesky 30-year bonds are 4.43%. So those bond yields still showing um, some concern uh, maybe about inflation. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. And if we take a look at oil this morning, well, oil, we've got oil a little bit higher. You can see we're trying to push up here after kind of a bouncy uh, week here in um, oil. We've got oil up $1.50 a barrel today at 70.72. Brent crude being up a dollar thirty-three and seventy-four forty a barrel, and Nat gas being up four point eight cents here on the day. And if we take a look at UNG, this has just been an amazing run to the downside to come all the way back here and retest the lows. So pretty amazing move. But this morning trying to bounce just a little bit. When we take a look at our precious metals, my goodness. Um, it's pretty hard to be sad if you're an owner of gold. Um, gold just continues to run to the upside looking strong. Silver is up this morning. We've got silver up, we've got copper up, platinum is higher, and palladium is just a little bit lower here this morning. So a little bit of bouncing around in here. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. 
Um, let's take a look at cryptos here this morning. Now, cryptos, they have had quite a move back up. If we take a look at Bitcoin in here, pushing up, well, B-I-T-O anyway, um, nice push up here, um, little W formation, as you can see in here, actually kind of a double W. We've got this potential W formation right here, and there was a little W formation right here. So pushing up, we'll have to watch that carefully if that can pop that resistance. And one of the interesting things about that is it's in that round and bottom breakout pattern above our 50 day moving average and the short term moving averages coming up to provide um, some upside potential there. So keep an eye on BITO. Let's take a look at our index charts here but before we do that everyone if um well let's just settle in let's buckle up let's get ready for the monday edition of the morning market prep video Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Apologize, I'm a little bit disjointed this morning, kind of in a rush, um, just because of timing and, and issues. And I also wanted to let you guys know that I'm putting this video out this morning, and then I have got to go in for not one, but a double root canal today. Um, believe me, I'm not looking forward to it. So... I will probably be unavailable um, until later on this afternoon um, because I do have to drive a ways to get to the, the surgeon that's going to do it. And um, eh, anyway, um, not going to be my best day. So let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we might want to approach the market for today. Remember, everyone, we want to look at these charts for what they are not for what we want them to be shake off that bias so if we take a look here at the diamonds there's no way you can look at this chart and not see a very very bullish chart of course all-time highs here on friday uh, record close again trying to push back up this morning seeing just a little bit of selling here and maybe just a little bit of uncertainty about all the earnings coming up this week after such a run to the upside so if those bulls can find inspiration here this morning, then every reason to believe we can push right on through there and have new record highs pretty easily in the market. Of course, if those bears were to find inspiration, we've got a little support right here. We could push back into that area to catch a little bit of support, bounce right off of that with no problem at all. If the bears were to push a little bit harder, Pushing on down, we might test this upside trend or even this area of price support in the chart. Now, I think as long as we hold in those areas, no one's going to be um, concerned at all. It would be if we were to break that trend and start coming back down into here. We've got a really nice area of price support, but I think breaking back down through here would probably raise a little bit of concern in the market. We'd see that implied volatility run up here in those um, options and we'll want to watch that pretty closely if we were to take a look at our spy spy also very very bullish chart there's just no way you can look at this and see bearishness but if you see that opportunity right in here if those bulls were to find inspiration here today then there's every reason that we can push right up through this um, resistance area of the chart and have blue sky above um, there in the spy. No reason to believe that can't be possible in this consolidating zone. However, if those bears were to find that inspiration here today, pushing down, you can see we've got a little bit of a double support right in here with the upside trend and a little bit of price support right in there. To potentially hold that and I don't see any concern if we were just to pull back into this range and hold in here that would probably not shake up the market at all it might be a little bit of concern if we were to break the trend here and then of course breaking the trend is one thing but breaking this bigger support area would be a little bit more pressure I think on the market and we've got a really strong area of price support down in here so I wouldn't 
say, you know, the sky is falling, but a little bit of concern might come into place if we were to start breaking back down through some of those trends. If we take a look at our QQQ, also quite bullish here, but we did leave behind maybe just a little concern. If you remember last week, I mentioned that possibility. If we can't push right back up here and test that high again, or even break out, we run that risk creating a lower high. And maybe that might be what is in the case here. We popped back up, but couldn't get all the way back up there. And now we're seeing that little bit of fade, so possibly a little lower high. I don't know that that's gonna be any major problem at all um, if we can hold this area of price support and of course the trend. So a little bit of pullback and rest in here, and then we could push right on higher. I don't see any major issue with that. It would be if we break this area of support. If we break here, then I do think a little bit of concern in the market could come into play, particularly if that trend really gives up and we're back down into this area. We might see a little bit of fear come into the market. Now, on the, on the bullish side, if those bulls can find inspiration, well, the first thing we need to do is break this little resistance right in here, push right back up into this resistance of the chart. And if that can break, then I think there's every reason to believe we have a chance to attack all time highs here in the chart. Now remember, there's not a whole lot of the big tech giants report this week. We do get reports from uh, Tesla here, I believe on Wednesday, um, but we'll want to be waiting um, and we might see that the QQQ might wait for some of those big tech reports to find that inspiration to maybe push through those all time highs. We'll have to wait and see. And then if we take a look at our IWM, IWM also a little bit of a resting consolidation in here, but I really don't see any problem with this. This is a bullish chart. If we can hold this support area in here, then I think there's every reason to think this could stretch on higher and attack those highs that go all the way back here to 2021, those high points in 2021. So we'll wanna be watching for or that possibility. Now, if the bears were to find inspiration, it's not all that hard to see. I drew this line across here, that possibility of us popping down through here. There is a little tiny bit of price support right there in the chart, but that possibility that we could push on back into this area of support. Now, I don't think we're gonna have too much worry here if that holds. If that holds and we were to bounce back off of that, I don't think we're going to see too much issue there. But if we were to start pushing back down through there and we start looking at some of these levels of price support and coming back down into this area and we've got this upside trend, you could draw this in several different ways, but that upside trend um, would hopefully catch us in here a little bit of a double layer of support in that um, real trouble in the market would be if we were to break back down through there. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX had a nice little pullback on Friday, as you can see. And for the first time, we finally were able, was able to break this down, this VIX down, and push us back down into this price support area of the chart. So down here around 18 handles in the VIX, that's a good sign for us. We have this little tiny downtrend in here in the chart. And if the bears were to find inspiration here today, well, it would be a break of that that might raise a little bit of, um, and just a little bit of a, a concern. Breaking back up through some of this resistance in here would probably be a little bit more concerned. And of course, testing this high would be a, a probably a significant problem for the market. Now, if the bulls continue to find inspiration, well, you can see these levels down in here. We could progress right on down into this area, down around 16 handles pretty easily, find some price support in there. And then of course, beyond that, we're gonna test these lows. And then you can see where we go from there if those bulls continue to find that inspiration to push higher. If we take a look at our T2122, this is where we have a little bit of concern. We have been 
really elevated in this market for quite a period of time. A lot of hype here in the market around earnings and it's normal, it happens every quarter. But we'll wanna watch this carefully as we continue to linger up here. We continue to stretch and stretch and stretch. We continue to add that pressure for that possibility. If we were to stumble, we could move fairly sharply lower quick. So make sure you're continuing to raise those stop losses and protect yourself here in the market in case that rollover were to occur. Now, right now, if we look at the bullish side of things, if the bulls can find inspiration, well, we certainly have some room up here. We can push back up here into this bearish reversal zone. So, hey, there's every reason to believe that that is possible with the data we have coming today. And then, of course, if the bears or to find inspiration here in the market. Well, there you go. We've got a big downside opportunity if they come in. And that's why I'm suggesting keep those stops up there. And you might want to be a little bit careful in over trading stocks to the long side until we get just a little bit of relief in that overbought type situation here in the market. If we look at our T2108, T2108 remains bullish. The bulls are still in control. We're up here in the low 60s. You can see once we get up here around 70 and up here toward those mid 70s, we start running into an extreme overbought situation. And it's possible we could still move up into that area. First, we're gonna to have to break that resistance in the chart. So watch that carefully. And if, if the bears were to be inspired, we'll notice right in here, probably not much to worry about. We've got some good support areas here in the chart. That's holding above the 50% area here. So no worries, bulls are definitely in control. T2107, very much the same thing. We are pushed up here near 60, as you can see, and you can see that here in T2107, uh, we get up here around the mid 60s and we're kind of in an extreme situation here in T2107. So watch that carefully. We still got some upside opportunity in here. We could stretch up into here easily, um, but you'll want to notice we do have some price resistance right across here as well. So if the bears were to find some reason to push down, notice we got this little upside trend that we could find some support in there and that's going to coincide pretty well with some support in here we're well above the 50 percent area here in t2107 so um, bulls are definitely in control we were kind of flat just slightly higher on friday just keep a close eye on that as we continue to stretch and then our t2101 well our t2101 had that breadth on friday starting to hook over here just a little bit. Maybe just a little bit of extension here in that chart. Remember, we're still mostly in the blackout period here for corporate buybacks. Um, those stocks that have already reported will start slipping out from underneath our blackout period, but all of the, everything else that has not yet reported will still be in their blackout period. So breadth um, can be a little bit of a problem when corporate buybacks are such a big part of the market volume. So we'll want to watch that carefully here, but we certainly have more upside potential here if the bulls find inspiration. What you don't want to see is you don't want to see on any kind of a bearish wave, you don't want to see this stretching up. That would say that the bears are growing um, more strength in the market. Right now, there's no evidence of that. But if we continue going up on the bullish wave, we'll, we'll be good. And then let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. Now, our economic calendar, we've got very little on this calendar for us to worry about except a whole bunch of Fed talk. Man, these, these talk about transparency. They never shut up anymore. So we've got Daly in here speaking. We've got Logan. We're going to have Kashkari. Uh, and, and we're just going to continue. Uh, Jeffrey's in here. Um, just four more Fed speakers here today. And then we're going to have leading indicators in here to be paying attention to at 10 a.m. Looks like they're looking at those coming in at a negative 0.3, which is a decline from the prior reading. You'll want to be keeping an eye on that one this morning. But it's not really a major market moving report. A couple of little bell auctions in here to be paying attention to. As we look through the rest of the week, you can see Tuesday is very light. 
Wednesday, we're going to pick up a little bit with mortgage applications, existing home sales, Atlanta Fed business inflation expectations, and a petroleum status. Again, more Fed speak, just all week uh, Fed speak here. We move into Thursday, probably the bigger day of um, um, economic stuff with that jobless claims in here. Chicago Fed national activity, we got PMI, uh, new home sales that we'll want to be paying attention to in there on Thursday. And then Friday, durable goods reports. That is one that can definitely be a market mover. We'll want to be keeping an eye on that on Friday with a consumer sentiment reading as well. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar here for today. And our earnings calendar, we have a few to be paying attention to. I'm just going to show you guys this because I didn't get the blog um, written today, but I um, took some time to do this. We've only got SASR here before the bell today, but you can see after that, we've got several here this afternoon to be paying attention to. So you can take a screenshot of that um, for those notable earnings for today. And then keep in mind, we're going to be ramping up this week heavily. So make sure you guys keep in mind that you can click the link below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog. So the rest of this week and for the rest of these earnings, that's going to be really important to know how to do that. Don't have to worry about it today. And of course, I'm not even getting a blog out today. So keep, um, keep that in mind for the rest of the week. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. I truly, truly appreciate everyone who does take the time to do that. Unfortunately, today, there's a chance I won't be able to answer them until later on in the day, so I do apologize for that. I'm not sure how much talking I'm going to be able to do um, after I'm all numbed up for these um, root canals, so we'll have to um, uh, play it by ear on that. So let's take a look at a few of these charts that could be setting up. Remember everyone, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful in this market. Make sure to be following your rules and your trading guidelines. Never ever blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Well, first off, let's take a quick look at some steel in here. We've got CLF and you guys remember I mentioned that I picked up CLF in here looking pretty darn good here at the moment, moving up in this nice little upside trend. If I take a look at this um, with our moving averages, we were up above the 50. We're in the round of bottom breakout. Now, of course, pushing up into this area of resistance, we could stall and we could rest a little bit. Might be time to think about a little bit of covered call if you wanted to um, hold a covered call on this or just close it out for a beautiful profit. But that was a nice little uh, pop to the upside in that pattern. So congrats to everyone that's in it. For those that are not, I would keep an eye on this because as this rests or consolidates, if this would rest, consolidate or pull back in here, I'd look for that next opportunity for that to push on higher. And if you take a look at NUE, Nucor, well, Nucor is going to be reporting today. So a steel company reporting today could certainly influence um, that position in CLF. So keep an eye on that for that opportunity if that can kind of maybe help out and continue to push to the upside. Let's take a look at um, a few more things in here. Take a look at this CPNG. Now this thing has been struggling here with this consolidation for a little while. And this morning we're looking at a gap down. Now it is coming back into this trend. We'll want to watch this carefully here this morning. Watch for that opportunity for a little bit of volatility in here. Um, we see this a lot here lately. We, we, we will whip down and then whip right back up and then take off 
through the upside, but watch that carefully. This is gonna have to get back above that support to make me happy. Proves that it can kind of hold up here and look for that next move to the upside in that chart. Take a look at shop. Shop continues to set up now. Fortunately, it's kind of slid past its trend here. And so we don't exactly know when it might go. So I've taken this entire line, turned that into alert and alert, and I need to actually lift it just a little bit at the moment. But as you can see, if that were to pop up in here, I'd be watching for that opportunity to push on through. If we can get that bullish energy, then there's a gap here, as you'll notice, that could be filled. So we could move up pretty nicely up in here if shop can get that bullish energy coming into the market. Let's take a look at Pinterest. Now, Pinterest is another one of those that I've been watching and this thing popped the alert, started to move up, now slid back into this support area of the chart flattening out this trend just a little bit. So I would still keep an eye on this though. Um, we're not giving up this support in here. So far there hasn't been enough sellers to give it up. So I'd be watching for that opportunity for this to pop and go in any time. And of course this, we have no idea where that trend is gonna end. So it could be out here, it could be any day that Pinterest decides to take that move to the upside. Um, speaking of Pinterest, let's take a look at Etsy. Now, Etsy is completely on the opposite end of this spectrum. And if we take a look here, we continue to move in this downtrend. And I don't like the fact that this has rallied back up and showing a little bit of weakness here in the chart. I would watch that carefully. If you remember here recently, someone gave them a downgrade. Um, I would watch this carefully for that possibility that this could end up short pushing that on down. Watch carefully here in Etsy. Now, I certainly don't want to say that about McDonald's. Yeehaw, McDonald's. There's that beautiful little setup in here, and we talked about that. Pushed on through, just continuing to run to the upside. Now, I would be a little bit careful expecting this to rest, maybe consolidate a little bit here at any time, so I wouldn't chase it to the upside. But if that can rest, come back here to trend just a little bit, I would look for that next opportunity of McDonald's looking very good, very strong overall. DoorDash continues to look good. After it popped this alert in here, continuing to run to the upside, found this next resistance in the chart. It goes all the way back over here, and then we rested. This is, you know, this is a, one of those really good examples. People ask me, how far back do you look for support and resistance? And I say, as far as you need to, because there's no question when you look at this chart, there's no question that this resistance that happened over here in 2022 had an impact on this chart right here. We struggle struggling with um, that trying to push through. There's nothing bearish about this chart at all. If we extend this trend up, this could continue to rest in here. And then I would still look for that next opportunity to pop that resistance and go on up there in DoorDash. If we take a look at Gilead, Gilead continues to look very good. The alert was right in here, popped just a little bit early on its trend over here. As you can see, popped before the trend, then rested over to the trend and pushed on up. So I would keep an eye on that. You can see we've consolidated a couple more days in here and there's every reason to believe that Gilead could find that energy in here with a bullish push in the market and we could push right on through and notice that we could come up here, test this all time high and then, oh, excuse me, it's not the all time high. Um, and you can see pop this resistance and then push on up to the all time high. Seems like a likely possibility on that. Now, I would say when we take a look at precious metals here, um, gold is one of those that has been incredibly strong. And here's that pattern again, guys, where we just, we move up, we consolidate to trend, we look for that um, entry signal and right on up it goes. Now, I wouldn't wanna chase this here um, this morning, right now, gold's up $22 an ounce in the gold futures at $2,752 an ounce. Um, but a little consolidation, a little rest in here would certainly um, be in, 
uh, possibility. So a little bit of rest, a little bit of pullback wouldn't be out of the question. Silver, I'm going to say the same on this. This just had a rocket ship ride here on Friday, pushing up into this resistance in the chart. And I've got to push this back to a weekly to get all the way back over here to 2013. And you can see that's where that resistance here is in the chart. So I would watch that carefully for a little rest, a little consolidation in here. Remember our trend, we may have steepened our trend just a little tiny bit, but we've got maybe some rest that needs to come there into silver. Even if it pops through that resistance, then expect that rest back here on those precious metals. So they're looking pretty good overall. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. In fact, I want to wish you a much, much better day than I'm going to have being in a dentist chair. You guys take care, be safe, have an awesome uh, day. I wish you great profits. I'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you all the best.